Good morning and a very warm welcome to you this morning as we gather together. It is Palm Sunday and we begin our Holy Week journey this week as we prepare for this coming weekend, which is Easter weekend. And so let's turn to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the beginning of this Holy Week as we prepare for Easter, the celebration of resurrection. But we know that even as we prepare for that, we need to go through death upon the cross. And so as we begin our week together, looking at this entry into Jerusalem, we bring to you, Lord, ourselves as we come to worship you. As we come to acknowledge, Lord, that this is one of the most important weeks in our whole year. But we come to offer you ourselves in our worship. So we would pray, Lord, that you would be blessed as we give you our ears and our attention. We pray, Lord, that through Scripture you would challenge us and teach us and draw us ever closer into an ever-deepening relationship with you. And so, Lord, we commit this time into your hands, praying, Lord, that you would be blessed and that you in turn would bless us through your Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we join together as we sing that song, All glory, Lord and honour, let us bring our praises before God. So 
first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9, the obedience of the Lord's servant. The sovereign Lord has taught me what to say, so that I can strengthen the weary. Every morning he makes me eager to hear what he is going to teach me. The Lord has given me understanding, and I have not rebelled or turned away from him. I bared my back to those who beat me. I did not stop them when they insulted me, when they pulled out the hairs of my beard and spit in my face. But their insults cannot hurt me, because the Sovereign Lord gives me help. I brace myself to endure them. I know that I will not be disgraced, for God is near and he will prove me innocent. Does anyone dare bring charges against me? Let us go to court together. Let him bring his accusation. The Sovereign Lord himself defends me. Who then can prove me guilty? The Gospel reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 17, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him, the master needs them, and he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make come true what the prophet had said. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord! Praise be to God! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? The people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the crowds answered. Jesus goes to the temple. Jesus went into the temple and drove out all those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the stools of those who sold pigeons and said to them, It is written in the scriptures that God said, my temple will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a hideout for thieves. The blind and the crippled came to him in the temple, and he healed them. The chief priests and the teachers of the law became angry when they saw the wonderful things he was doing, and the children shouting in the temple, Praise to David's son. So they asked Jesus, Do you hear what they are saying? Indeed I do, answered Jesus. Haven't you ever read the scripture? You have trained children and babies to offer perfect praise. Jesus left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Life is often referred to as a journey. It's a voyage of different experiences that often bring us from places of joy to sadness and maybe even back again. But it is a journey from birth to death and beyond. Every voyage, every journey has a beginning and an end, or an entry and an exit. Entry, of course, suggests an invitation, something welcoming, a beginning of sorts. And I'm reminded of that verse from Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, that says, as Jesus speaks, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever hears my voice and opens the door, I will enter. I will come in and eat with them, and they will eat with me. There's this deep suggestion of new things, of fellowship, of being together, of exciting things beginning. But in the same vein, exit looks at maybe an ending conclusion to something and here again I'm reminded of that passage of scripture from Ecclesiastes in chapter 3 where it speaks about everything has a time 
There's a time for building and a time for tearing down, a time for planting and a time for pulling up, a time for living and a time for dying. But it does suggest salutations, time is up. But what's interesting is what happens between the beginning and the ending, or what happens between the entry and the exit. In today's reading, we read about Jesus entering into Jerusalem. For Jesus, this is a familiar road. He's traveled it often. And you'll remember way back when he was very young, he traveled this road with his parents to the Passover festival. And it was at that point that he gets left in the temple and his parents have to come back and find him. But every year, Jesus had traveled this road entered into Jerusalem along this road to celebrate the Passover festival. I guess with his disciples, as they were wandering around and going about ministry, they traveled this road often. Jesus knew the road. It was very familiar to him. He knew the approach to Jerusalem. He was aware of the views, of the vegetation, and even of the people on the road. As familiar as this journey was to Jesus, this entry is a unique one. He comes into Jerusalem and for the first time he's riding a donkey and a colt. They've never been ridden before. Jesus had never come into Jerusalem in this manner before. There's a crowd that is surrounding them, laying down their cloaks on the ground, waving palm branches. And there seems to be a bigger hype at this particular entry. And then, of course, there's much noise that is happening with people shouting praises. Praise to David's son. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. There is much that's unique about this entry. And so as Jesus enters into Jerusalem, there is an even quicker and surprising exit later on in the day. I don't know whether you noticed, but will you read verse 17? Jesus left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. What happened between the entry and the exit? Well, we know that Jesus enters the temple. Why? Well, probably because it was the Passover festival and he needed to go and organize the sacrifice that needed to be done. But he goes to worship. But it's not necessarily the motive that's so important. It is what Jesus does that is more important. We all remember what happened when Jesus entered the temple at this particular time in Jerusalem. We know about the clearing of the temple where Jesus gets angry. Where in John's gospel we told he he made a whip and he chased the people out and he chased the animals out. A real sense of chaos and disorder, setting animals free. But do you remember that Jesus in this moment is also teaching the people, reminding them of what worship is all about, challenging them on what their worship has become? Is there not a challenge in that for us as well? What has our worship become? Is our worship of God and of what God wants it to be? Or have we possibly made it into something different? Made it into something it should not be? Do you remember verse 14, which maybe you notice, but... We don't always remember in the clearing of the temple. And so it reads like this. The blind and the crippled came to him in the temple and he healed them. As much as there was chaos and the clearing of the temple and the overturning of tables, Jesus takes time to teach. Jesus takes time to listen and to heal those who are blind and those who are crippled. In the midst of all that, we see that there are a couple of basic reactions to Jesus and to who he is. 
The crowd, as Jesus enters Jerusalem, well, they full of hype. They get caught up in the moment, each one of them thinking that there's something in it for them. They feign their allegiance to him. But the reality is when Jesus begins to teach, when Jesus begins to challenge, then many of them turn against him. The Pharisees are noticing everything that's happening. And maybe they've been chased out of the temple with the whips and the disorder and everything that was happening. But there's a real sense of threat. Jesus has come. There's this plot hiding behind there to get rid of him. He is a threat to them, to what they know and what they are comfortable with. Maybe there's the sense if he's the new king, then they definitely will not be number one. Life will change if Jesus becomes king. And then, of course, the disciples, they continue to follow Jesus, even though they again do not understand. But they will follow him because they trust him. They will follow him, hopefully to the end, but we know they desert him in the end. But they will follow him. Because he is their Lord, their Rabbi, even though they do not understand it. And so as Jesus approaches us this Easter, what's our reaction to him? Do we react like the crowd, like the Pharisees, like the disciples? As we approach this Easter, what is our reaction to Jesus. But as Jesus enters Jerusalem and as he exits at the end of the day, he leaves us with what he left. We're on a life journey, every single one of us. We have an entry date, which could be the date of our birth. We have an exit date, which we do not know what that date will be. But we do know that between those two dates, there is much living that needs to take place. It's what we do between those dates that is so vitally important. How do we react to Jesus this Easter? How do we respond to God this Easter? I conclude with a poem entitled, the Dash Poem, and it's by Linda Ellis. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represented all the time that they spent alive on earth. And now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? Let us pray.
And so, Lord, as we seek how we're going to respond to you this Easter, may we be faithful to you and true to ourselves. We pray, Lord, you would fill us with your spirit. Keep revealing yourself to us as we prepare to celebrate Easter together, reminding us of all that you've done through your life, through the cross, through the whole of the Easter story. Don't only remind us, Lord, but convict us of how we can live in an ever-deepening relationship with you. So lead us and guide us, we pray. Anoint us with your Spirit. May this Easter be a special Easter as we respond to you in a way that makes a difference in our lives and in the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we sing our concluding song together as we head into Holy Week. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Thank you for sharing with us this morning. I pray you have a blessed Holy Week and that the Easter celebrations you have planned will be filled with much joy, praise and celebration. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. <laughs>